Hello everyone, welcome to Cheesy Code. In this lecture, we are going to learn about what is R.Java file, what is view, and what are view groups. So let's get started. In our previous lecture, we saw that we have to pass on the activity name inside the set content view method. Here it's written r.layout.activity main, which is the name of the activity. It is present in the layout folder with the name of activity underscore main dot XML. Now let's see what is R and what is R.layout. Just change the solution view to project, then inside build folder, go through source, then R folder. Then you can see there is your package name and inside which there is the file with the name of R. Now let's open it. This R.java file is system generated file which Android creates and it has all the resources mentioned that are present in our project. Now you can see there are specific IDs allocated to different resources. Now as we know that we have activity underscore main dot XML file in our resources. So let's see whether this r.java file has it or not. So here we can see there is an int id present for this activity underscore main and it is present inside the static class named as layout. So whenever there is a resource added to the rest folder r.java file creates an id for this so that we can refer that particular resource in our code. Let's take another example for this. There is values folder inside the rest folder. Inside this we have string.xml. So here in Android projects we use strings as resources because everything that we write inside the Android project is referred from this string.xml file. Every string that we use is mentioned inside this file and it is considered as a resource. So here there is a string with id app underscore name which specifies the name of the app so we'll search this in r.java file whether it is present or not. As we can see there is an id present for app underscore name and it is present under the static class string. So to refer this app underscore name we just have to write r.string.app name. String is the class, app name is the name of the int variable. So let's see in the code how we can use it. So here in this code you can see that the IntelliSense is specifying that there is a resource with the name of app underscore name. So that's how we do it. So let's conclude what is r.java. r.java file contains the integer id corresponding to the resources. To view this file we have to change the project view in android studio. One important note that this file r.java is system generated and it should not be edited at any cost. So you should never ever edit it. Now let's see what is view. So views are basic building blocks for the application like this text view, button, checkboxes, all are part of views. It's basically a rectangular area whose width and height are defined in layout file in terms of dp. Views are inherited from android.view.view. So let's see the official documentation. So let's see the official documentation of the view. So here you can see that the text view class is inherited from android.view.view. These are the known subclasses of text view and you can see the button class as well. In button class, button class is also inherited from text view and text view is in itself inherited from view.view. .view. Now let's have a look at view class. So this is view class and it has known subclasses like text view, view group. We'll be discussing view group shortly. Now let's scroll down this page and we'll see some properties that we can assign to a view. Like there is an ID. We can assign IDs to different controls. Also there is padding, we can change color and we can give margins and all different properties that are mentioned here. So these are the properties that we give to a control to configure their appearance, how they appear on the screen. Now let's see what is view group. View groups act as a container and multiple controls can be put in inside a view group. These view groups provide boundary to a certain set of controls so that a set of controls can be placed at a specific location on the screen. Linear layout, relative layout are the example of view groups. We can place view group inside another view group as per our need. And this view group is also inherited from android.view.view as we just saw before. You can see here there are multiple views present and there's an outer boundary which can be a view group. It arranges all the views in a linear format like here. They are arranged in a vertical format. Now let's take another example. Here, this is a form in which there are multiple controls like name and address. 
Now here my requirement is that the edit field should appear on the right of the label like the edit for name should appear next to the name label. So there is a view group for this as well. Now as I mentioned earlier that we can place a view group inside another view group. So here this male and female checkboxes are placed inside another view group which are placing them horizontally. So all in all view groups provide a boundary to the controls to different views so that a specific layout can be presented on the screen. Let's see an image to understand it better. This picture summarizes all the view groups and views relation. Here we can see on the root there is a view group. Then in child there can be a view group. There can be multiple views as well. And for those particular view groups there is another view. So all in all this is the hierarchy that views follows. Also there is an example of linear layout where the views can be placed horizontally or vertically in a similar fashion. Also there is relative layout in which we can specify that view 3 should be placed right to the view 2 or view 1 should be placed up above the view 2 that we can specify in a relative layout. Let's take up a small example of linear layout. Here as view group we have taken linear layout. There are two buttons. This linear layout view group is providing a boundary to both of these controls and they are placed horizontally because of this linear layout property which is the orientation and it has been set to horizontal. In our next video we will learn about how to place different controls over the screen using view groups. Till then you can read more about layouts and view groups on our site at cheesycode.com. If you liked our video please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.